Hello from Amsterdam. So everyone's awake, but might not be after the talk. I'm not good at cracking jokes, so we are going to do a pretty serious talk about React Server Components. So yes, I'm Ashima. I'm from Miro. I'm working as a front-end engineer. And today, we will be talking about React Server Components. But before we talk about this, let's first talk about the rendering strategies that we have. So we have client-side rendering and server-side rendering. Talking about the client-side rendering, in a typical React application, when users request a website, server sends an HTML with div, ID, app, and a script tag with bundle.js. The browser will then download the JS file, React will get loaded, and after that, browser sends an initial request to fetch the initial data. Once the data is returned from the server, the initial con the content becomes visible. This approach works pretty well in building high user interactive websites because we can render only the components which are changed instead of re-rendering the entire application. However, there are a few downsides of this approach using client-side rendering. The problem mainly comes when our application grows and scales. We keep on adding more and more code to our JS bundle. And because of the large bundle size, our browser will take more time to download the JS. And as a result, we get delayed FCP. And also, we have SEO problems. And we are not able to run uh, to run the app on JavaScript, non-JavaScript devices. To solve all these problems, we have server-side rendering. Sorry, I'm messing up the slides a bit. <laughs> yeah, so with the server-side rendering, this time when user requests a website, the server will send a fully rendered HTML to the client. But this is just the static data. We need our data to be interactive. So parallelly, browser will download the JS file, React takes control, and the content becomes interactive. So we get a huge benefit from SSR that we get improved load times. Uh, SEO problem is also solved. But SSR is typically used on the initial load. But what if we want to use it after the initial load as well? In SSR, after the initial load, our entire, after hydration, every, our entire application behaves like a client-side rendered application. However, if we are using SSR with Next.js, then on each route change, we can use SSR. But the problem is that the uh, state of client components is not, bit, uh, not maintained as we switch between the routes. So finally, talking about the new stuff, React Server Components. So this is not exactly like server-side rendering, but I would say this is complementary to server-side rendering. Uh, as you can use both of them together or separate. So as the name suggests, so, uh, React Server Components are rendered on the server. And this time, server will not send the fully rendered HTML but it will send a JSX-like object, which looks something like this. It's not a JSON, but it's some special format. So the huge benefit we are getting out of React Server Components is that no matter how much code we do on the server components, use heavy libraries like movement.js or char.js, none of the server component code gets added to the client bundle on initial load. And this is pretty amazing. React team has been selling React server components on this point. They also have a blog which says introducing zero bundle size server components. So this is one of the uh, biggest benefit we are getting out of it. And also, unlike server side rendering, the state of client components is maintained. And since everything is getting done, rendered on the server, so we can have direct access to DB file system, or any other node APIs. So React Server con uh, Components give us control to decide which components are to be rendered on server and which components are to be rendered on client. 
So we can combine the higher interactivity of client-side rendered application with the fast performance of server. Currently, it's still in experimental stage and only supported with Next.js, I would say Next 12. So before we do the live coding, let's talk about the rules we should take care while creating the app server component. I will just read them out. So first, we need to save our files with extension .server.js and .client.js. This would tell React that which component is to be rendered on server and which component is to be rendered on client. We can also save our files with extension .js, and this will tell React that this component can be rendered both on server as well as client. Another important thing to keep in mind is that server components can only pass serialized props to client components. We will see what that means when we uh, jump to the live coding. And also, client components cannot import server components, but server components can import client components. We also need some configurations to start with React server component. So as I already mentioned, they are only supported with Next.js. So we need to install uh, Next Canary, React RC, and React Dome RC. And in the next configuration file, we need to turn on the flags uh, server components choose. So let's create a React server component and see how that looks. Let's suppose we are going to create an application, which is simple email application. It has a list of emails on the left-hand side. And as you click on uh, any email item, uh, email list item, so it will load the email content. So uh, we are not only going to render the first page from the server, but also the email body will be rendered from the server. So our app structure looks something like this. We have an email body and an email list. Let's say the email list, comp uh, email list component looks something like this. So we can say that we can get the data from API. Then we can loop over the emails and show the content which we want to display on the email list item. Now here, instead of using the raw date, I would like to format the date using library date fn. So this is around like 21 KBs. But as we convert this component into server component, we will see that this doesn't get added to the client bundle. So this is our email list component. Now we are going to convert this component into React server component. So we'll break, we can break this into two components. We can t uh, keep one container component in which we'll keep, we can keep everything related to data fetching, data manipulation, or heavy computations. And we can keep everything related to client interactions in our view component. It will contain the state, it can contain the CSS, and it can contain also the event listeners. So as I already mentioned that we also need to rename the files with .server and .client extension for React to know we are to render which component. Now we can import the client component into the server component. And uh, we saw that we can import client component into the server component, but we can't do the opposite. We can't import a client component, we can't import a server component into a client component. So one thing to note here is that I'm passing name, subject, description, and date into my email list view component. And here we can only pass the props which can be serialized over the network. That means we can't pass any functions or event listeners as props into the client component from the server component. So this is how our server component looks like. And since it is going to be rendered on the server, so we can use DB directly to get the data. And also, we can read from the file system directly. 
we will not be creating email body component because it also will look similar. But if you want to read more about it, then you can check out the blog by React team. It has a pretty nice video explaining what React server components are and also the demo. We also have the next year's documentation, which, uh, which has all the configurations needed to get started with the next years. Um, so the another one is this application, which is made by the Vercel team, Next our notes application. So you can check it out. It is a live application using React server components. So now let's see what we have built so far. So we built this email app. So one thing I want to show here is that in the sources, if I check in the web pack, so we use date fns library in email list component. And here in the node modules, you can see there is no date, date fns library imported. And also if we check on the components, so we see that we have email body, email card, which is just like a UI component here, and email list. So if I open it, it only contains the client component. So server components are not added to the client bundle. And here in the email list or in the email card, we only see the co client component. Now let's see how the network request look like. So if I just uh, click on this card, so this is also getting, uh, the email body is also getting loaded from the server. And I will just uh, yeah, exit the full screen so that you can see. If you uh, pay attention to the route, so as I'm clicking on the email list item, uh, the route is getting changed. So it is getting rendered from the server. Yeah, now uh, let's see in the network tab. So here, uh, as you can see, the, the data looks something like this. So we have this JSX-like object, which is sent from the server to the client. Um, another important uh, thing to note here is that, let's suppose I mark an email list item as visit. And now I'm going to uh, click on another email list item. So the text is changed, the email body three is loaded, and you can see, uh, see that this client state is persisted. So it's not re-rendering the entire page. Only the email body part is getting re-rendered. So we saw the favorite things marked as full favorite. Yeah, so this is uh, about the application, what we created. Let's talk about the trade-off. I would say it's pretty early to say at this time because this is right now in alpha stage and there are no actual product apps using React server components. There can be some security concerns related to direct data, uh, direct data fetching from the DB, but we will know more as the adoption will increase. Now the more interesting thing to talk about is how React is able to achieve this, how we are able to get all these benefits, zero KB added to the bundle size, client bundle size and uh, then we have client component state which is maintained. We are also getting direct access to DB file system, all the node APIs. So before we dive into React's brain, I would like to make a disclaimer here that these are all my deductions. So this is not something which is mentioned on any documentation or uh, blog of React server components, but I just want to share my thoughts with you that how this stuff must be uh, happening. So, so we had the first thing which we talk about that client components can't import server components. N so this means that our dome structure will look something like this. So the client components will either be the leaf node or there will not be any server component after the client component. Now let's suppose we, so uh, in the, what Next.js already provides us is that on 
each route change, Next.js will render all the components and send the chunk of these rendered components to the client. So on every route change, Next.js is going to traverse the tree, render all the components, and send it as a chunk to the client. Now let's suppose we are getting this rendered component from the server. And what it is going to do is it is going to directly replace all the components on the client DOM. And that is why the state of client components is also dropped. This entire tree is going to replace the tree on the client. So now, uh, React server components are leveraging this feature of Next.js. But instead of rendering all the components, we are they are rendering only the components which are on the server. So they are only rendering the server components and sending the serialized JSX data, which we saw in the network tab. So now, this is the, uh, this is the dome structure which we are getting from the, uh, from the server. And this will not replace the entire tree, but it will take a diff, what is changed, and only replacing that part. So the client component state is maintained. And that is how we can say that in React server components, client state is maintained. Second thing is that React server components run in node environment on server. So for Node.js, this is just like any function which is returning a serialized string to the client. So that means that nothing, none of the code of server component gets added to the bundle. So we add zero KB to the bundle size. And because everything is running on Node, so we also get direct access to DB and file system. Now, we saw we can achieve so many things with the React server components, but it was not launched with React 18. In fact, it is getting launched with the, it lo got launched with the next 12. Uh, the question is, why do we need a framework? So for React to achieve all these things, it needs control at all the levels, rendering, routing, and bundling. So that's why uh, for now they have started the adoption with the frameworks. So our uh, folder structure will look something like this. We'll have components in which we have server components which are getting rendered on the server, and we have client components which are getting rendered on the client. So we can pretty much say that every front-end dev is now a full-stack dev. So happy coding. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> If you have any questions regarding React server components or you want to discuss more, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter. And if you want to go through the slides, then you can check them out on my GitHub repository as well. Thank you.